Welcome to the Red Conrad Show, the story of my life and world events how I see them. If you like the show, don't forget to subscribe. Let's get this going. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe for subscriber-only content. You can find links to subscribe at show.redconrad.com. Subscriptions are available directly through Spotify, as well as through your, a member full account, where you, you can access subscriber-only content on any podcast listening platform. Whatever platform you prefer to listen to podcasts on, you will be able to listen to my subscriber-only content on that platform via a, a feed specifically for you through your memberful account. Again, the links to subscriptions can be found at show.redconrad.com. Hi, everyone. This is JJ, the co-founder of Good Pods. If you haven't heard of it yet, Good Pods is like Goodreads or Instagram, but for podcasts. It's new, it's social, it's different, and it's growing really fast. There are more than 2 million podcasts, and we know that it is impossible to figure out what to listen to. On Good Pods, you follow your friends and podcasters to see what they like. That is the number one way to discover new shows and episodes. You can find Good Pods on the web or download the app. Happy listening! Hello, everybody. How you doing? I just want to um, put out that people are fucking assholes. All right. Uh, now, first of all, before I get into what I'm going to say, I just want to say that this isn't just a fucking problem um, with people suffering with BPD or you know other mental issues that you know make them emotion hard. Um, because normal people, the topic I'm going to talk about, could feel just as hurt, just as annoyed, just as frustrated, aggravated, as those of us that emotion hard do. But, uh, you know, people are fucking them assholes, and I was warned about somebody in my life that I'm talking to, by one of my, fr- by one of my fucking best friends, and recently, everything that they warned about to me about this fucking person, based on a little bit of information that I told them about this person, and that we're actually meeting them, um, ended up being true. Um, look, I don't give a flying fucking rat's ass who the fuck you are, okay? Or how good of a fucking person you think you are. You're a horrible fucking god in person if you fucking got and play with people's fucking minds and fuck with their fucking emotions as somebody just did with me. All right. Now, granted, I did feel it coming. I had a funny fucking feeling that that, that that that's what was going on, and I was warned, like I said, by one of my best friends. That was that. That's what was happening to me. I didn't want to believe it. Well, I more or less just fucking got and found out the hard way. More than likely because fucking got in person under this under the circumstances, how things played out, and I'm not going to say what happened. They were kind of fucking forced to tell me that that's what they were fucking got him doing, in so many words. And so I'm going to make this real clear for anybody who's listening who has BPD or any other kind of mental health issue where they emotion hard, they attach to people easily, and they emotion hard. And if you don't know what I mean by emotion hard, listen to my past episodes. I do talk about it somewhat frequently, or Google it, or you know, go to online social media groups designed for people suffering with different conditions, and, you know, do a search inside those groups, because uh, people do talk about it. It does bother us sometimes, to a degree. <clears throat> we turn to each other, other sufferers, for support, you know, getting through it. <clears throat> um... But anyways, those who have a mental issue that, you know, where we emotion hard, or even if you don't have a mental health issue and you, you know, still attach easily to people, you still, you know, emotion hard. If you have a gut feeling 
that somebody in your life that you're attached to is fucking with your mind and or, you know, playing with your heart, playing with your fucking emotions, listen to that fucking goddamn feeling. Don't let it fucking drag out to a point where you're going to end up finding out the hard way that that your, that your gut feeling was right and or if any of your fucking friends warned you about it, that they were fucking got him right. Because finding out that way is going to hurt a lot fucking got him more than just listening to your fucking goddamn gut feeling and just, you know, dealing with it or, or in t- cutting the person off entirely out of your fucking damn life entirely. Whichever way would be easier for you to fucking damn deal with it. If you can keep them in your life, but deal with, but deal with the fact of what they did, and understand that that's what they're fucking got them doing, and then, you know, because of that, don't let yourself get, you know, too attached to them. Don't let yourself, you know, be used and abused by them, knowing what they're doing. Um, if you can handle that, then 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 by all means. Um, if you can't, if you can't play their game with them, you know, then then fucking. Cut them off. Because quite frankly, nobody, regardless who the fuck you are, whether you've got mental health issues or not, nobody fucking damn deserves to be second option, backburnered, or used as a fucking god and backup plan. Okay, so... You, you, you just gotta fucking listen to your damn gut feeling. You know, because it... What people do to us, and if you're one of those people that try to be fucking god and nice, fucking... To think you're a good fucking god in person, but you're gonna take the good people in your life, the nice people in your life, the people that actually fucking care about you, and you're gonna fucking make them a second, third, fourth fucking option, or, or a backup plan, or, or you're gonna fucking place them on the fucking god in back burner, only to fucking listen to the, understand that they actually exist, and, and include them in your life only when shit hits the fucking fan, cause everybody in your life, when things are good, aren't there and things are bad, you're a fucking fucked up individual, man. How the fuck you look at yourself in the fucking goddamn mirror fucking treating people that way? You know, and a lot of you people go through fucking goddamn life one fucked up situation after the fucking goddamn other. And then you fucking got them question why. Well, when you surround yourself with a bunch of fucking losers that don't fucking care about you or support you in the slightest, because if they did, when things got fucking rough for you, they'd still be there for you, instead of fucking pretending like you don't fucking exist. When you find yourself with a bunch of fucking losers like that, what the fuck do you think is going to happen? And quite frankly, as people like me, as good people, decent people, that you're fucking using and abusing in your life, as we fucking find out that that's what, what you're doing, as we find out, as we discover that we're fucking being... Uh, second option, or backup planned, or, or place on the fucking back burner. As we fucking wake up to that fact, we're gonna end up fucking cutting people from our fucking lives, because we, we don't need to fucking have that kind of fucking bullshit in our fucking goddamn lives. We attach easily to fucking goddamn people, those of us with, with, you know, certain mental health issues, in particular, attach easily to people. Whether you're a fucking friend, a close family family member, whatever. We attach easily to people, and when we view somebody as, you know, part of our inner fucking circle, we will literally fucking die for you, okay? We will literally fucking die for those in our inner circle. So to find out that that type of care and support isn't being reciprocated, that's going to fucking fuck with our fucking mental state. And we can't fucking have that. Me, for I, for one, can't fucking have that. I spent years following my official diagnosis, you know, understanding, you know, how exactly uh, I ended up with my disorder, <clears throat> working on the different causes, and learning different fucking coping skills, so I can fucking better my own fucking goddamn life, and, and better myself as a person. I need to focus on my problems, my issues, the, the daily issues that life throws at me. You know, just general everyday life bullshit. I can't fucking busy myself with worrying about if a friend, a family member, or whomever is fucking reciprocating the level of care and support that I have for them back to me. I can't fucking allow myself to fucking hang on 
<clears throat> to a relationship, whether it be a friendship, a, fa a familial, whatever, <clears throat> find out the fucking hard way <clears throat> that it was never a fucking goddamn two-way fucking street. And then, you know, fall into, you know, a, 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 the possibility of a prolonged depressive episode fucking dealing with that shit. I can't fucking have that. I can't fucking allow that shit. As it is, for those of you that, that don't know, for those of you who haven't been following my show, which is I'm going to say for the whole fucking story, go back and listen to the older episodes. I just lost my fucking god and wife um, almost two years ago. And that spun me into the, possibly the deepest, darkest, depressive episode of my fucking life. And then in the process, I wound up in the current situation that I'm in right now, and that I'm still fucking trying to fucking get out of. And twice in the past fucking couple of weeks, I just barely avoided a fucking worst case scenario with one of the issues of the situation. Okay? I am fucking trying to get my fucking shit back on track, my, my fucking life back in order, after fucking losing my wife. Something happened that I felt was going to allow me to heal quicker and get back on track quicker just for that shit to be fucking blown up in my face. Again, that was spoken about in a previous episode. I believe it was a subscription-only episode, so if you want to hear that episode, you got to pay for the subscription. The link is in the description of this episode to pay for the subscription, and then uh, regardless of what platform you're on, and then you should be able to see all the subscription-only episodes and trust me, out of the list of subscriber-only episodes, you'll know which episode to fucking turn to about this. But that shit went fucking sideways on me. And when it did, I was warned by my best fucking friend about this particular person and what they were fucking doing to me. I didn't want to hear it. My gut more recently started telling me that's what's happening, your fucking friend is right. I didn't want to fucking hear it. Well, it turns out, yeah, they were right, as I recently found out. So, for all you people that are like me, attach easily to people, and emotion hard, here's fucking fair warning to you. Regardless if it's a friend, family member, whatever the relationship status is, if you, your gut is telling you that that particular relationship is more or less one way. And the level of care and support you have for that person isn't being reciprocated back in any way, shape, or form. You only exist to that person when times are bad for them, but when times are good for them, you more or less basically don't fucking exist. Listen to your fucking gut. Listen to your fucking mind coming to the realization of that. And, and just fucking cut that person out of your life entirely. If you feel you're not strong enough to do that, depending on who the person is and what their relationship is to you, have a conversation with them. And let them know how you fucking got in feel. And until those feelings are rectified and can you start feeling like it's an actual fucking two-way street with that relationship, that your level of care and support is only going to go so far. That you're only going to fucking give back to them exactly what it is that they give back to you. And don't allow yourself to go one inch fucking goddamn further. And between those two options, I'm sorry, but you got to pick which, whichever one's going to be easier for you to deal with with your, with your mental state. You don't want your mental state to fucking digress or get worse or put you in a more fucked up situation... Because you're spending too much fucking time focusing on that. If it's going to be easier just to cut them out of your life, cut them out of your life. If it's going to be easier for you to have a discussion with them and, and match what they're fucking giving you in, in return. And, and, and then as they start showing more care and support, you start equally showing more care and support. If that's going to be easier for you to do, then, then do it, then, then do, it, do, do it that way. As far as people that you know, are fucked in the head like that, where where they think they're fucking good people, they want to be a fucking good person, but you're fucking making people into second options, backburnering them, using them as a fucking goddamn backup plan to when things are fucking goddamn bad. Man, fuck you. You have no idea what the fuck can you do into those fucking goddamn poor people's fucking goddamn mental states in the process. Regardless if they were diagnosed with a mental issue or not. 
And I say that because, yes, I suffer with mental issues. So, me being fucking toyed with because of the, one of the conditions I have in particular, it fucks with me in a big way. It's a really big fucking guy in way because I attach super easily and I do fucking emotion hard. So, you know, when I'm happy, I'm, I'm extremely ecstatic. But when I'm hurt, I'm hurt. Like, it can be some, the stupidest fucking thing, right? Like, but that most people, they might be fucking upset for all the few minutes and then, they're, and then they're over it. That same type of situation with me, I will literally have a gash in my fucking heart bleeding all over your brand new rug. And yes, I stole that line from a good Charlotte song. That, that's, that's literally, you know, how I, I, how I emotion. Okay, I emotion hard. There is no fucking middle ground with me. It's one extreme to the next. And there's been several fucking people, you know, over the past few months, maybe a year, that I've been fucking cutting out my life because of how they've been fucking goddamn doing me and, and different realizations I made about them and our so-called fucking goddamn friendship or, you know, different relationships that, you know, we've had or I thought we had when my care and support for them wasn't being fucking reciprocated at, on the same level, if at all. I've been fucking cutting them out of my life. And now I just recently found out that there's yet another fucking god in person. I gotta make that determination with myself. Are they gonna fucking get cut out of my life? Because they fucking flat out lied to me. They fucking led me on. They fucked with my fucking head. And they fucking toyed with my fucking emotions. So now I gotta find out with, with, with you know, between me and myself and I. Is it going to be easier for me just to fucking cut this person out of my fucking life for what they fucking did to me? Or am I going to attempt to have a fucking conversation with them about how I fucking got in feel and see where fucking things go on that, on that level? I have no fucking damn idea. I gotta figure that one out with, with myself. Well, I know is that, uh, my circle's been getting extremely fucking small because, well, there was a quote by somebody, I don't remember the exact examples, or all of them, but there was a number of them, but the gist of it was, you hang out with fucking four losers, you're gonna be the fifth, you hang out with fucking four drunks, you're gonna be the fifth, you hang out with four, with four successful people, you'll be the fifth. So, while I'm trying to figure myself out, while I'm trying to work on myself, and, you know, fine-tune the coping skills that I've learned over the years with, for my conditions. And while I'm trying to get my life back in order and back on track, I've been cutting out, you know, all different fucking forms of negativity, all forms of judgmental fucking bullshittery. I can't have that crap in my life. I need a fucking solid support system in my life. I need, you know, solid people in my life. People, people that are going to be there for me just as much and just as hard as I am for them. So I've been fucking releasing a lot of fucking weight out of my life so I can focus on what I got to do and get my life back on track and get my life, you know, ultimately where I want it to be. And, no, it hasn't been easy. For those of you that suffer with BPD or similar conditions... You know better than anybody. You know, cutting somebody out of your life that you're attached to is not an easy concept, let alone something that's easy to do. Like even after can you do it, even after can you cut out of your life, can you're still you're still fucking questioning yourself whether or not that was the right thing to do. Even if you're noticing cutting since cutting that that particular negative person out of your life, can you start noticing your life getting better? You're still, you might still find yourself questioning it every now and again. You might find yourself fucking missing that person. If you suffer with BPD or similar conditions, you understand that better than anybody. Than anybody. So, no, it's not easy to do. Sometimes you got to. Sometimes you have to. For your own fucking mental state of mind. Especially if you emotion hard and you were recently diagnosed with one of these fucking conditions. You need to focus on your mental state. You need to focus on your fucking mental health. You need to be to start... You know, working on yourself, working on your coping skills, and, and, and making your life better. And so you simply can't have all that negativity in your fucking life. Regardless where it comes from, 
regardless what's fucking causing it, you gotta fucking get rid of it. Even if it's the fucking area you live in. Like, I come from New York, like I've said in previous episodes. I come from New York. I left New York. Since I left New York, my life did, for a little while, start getting better before I hit the issues that I hit. And I've been questioned several times by my family and friends if I was going to go back to New York. And aside from the price factor, I really don't fucking want to because, one, it is expensive to live up there. Two, I don't miss the snow at all. And three, there was just so much fucking negativity in New York in several different areas where I lived up there that I, I just feel going back to New York would be a fucking mistake for me. There's more positive shit for me here in fucking Florida than there ever was back in fucking New York. The people are different. The general atmosphere is fucking different. It's it's, it's like a whole different world. I don't live in a city. I live, I live pretty rural. Not that there isn't rural parts in New York I can try to move to, but here again, I don't want to snow. The cost of living is fucking ridiculously high. Not that it's, you know, all that cheap here in Florida, because prices are going up. Cost of living is going up down here. But even so, I know it's high, a lot higher than in New York than it is here. I don't miss the snow at all. I don't really want to deal with the, deal with the snow again. And, there, and you, I just... Just being in the state, even if I, even if I'm fucking still hundreds of miles away from where I come from, I might still feel that negativity simply for being in the state, in the same state as where, as where I come from. So I just can't do it. I'm fine here in Florida. And once I feel like Florida is becoming too negative for me, I might go somewhere else. I don't know. But the point is, regardless who, what, where the negativity is coming from, you have to fucking cut that shit the fuck out your life. Anybody that, that you fucking realize is fucking using you, they're, that they're, they're, they're toying with your mind, they're toying with your emotions, you're nothing more than a second option or a backup plan f- for them, you, you gotta cut that shit the fuck out your fucking goddamn life. Your life will be fucking way more better for it. And quite frankly, like I said, people that do that to people are fucking assholes. Whether they're knowingly doing it or, or, or not, they're, they're fucking assholes. You don't, you don't fucking got him play with people's fucking got him minds and hearts like that. You just fucking got him don't. Hi everybody, how you doing? Now that I've gotten past the whole. <clears throat> You don't fucking talk people's minds stuff. I want to get into talking about being in rough situations. Like I said in in uh, the first half of this episode, there was a quote that m- more or less the gist of it was, hang out with four losers, you'll be the fifth. Hang out with four drunks, you'll be the fifth. Hang out with four successful people, you'll be the fifth. So regardless of what situation you're going through, if you want to get through that situation on a positive note, you want to fucking have the best possible case scenario happen on the other end of the situation that you're going through, you you need to take a step back, take a deep breath, um, get rid of that fucking panic attack you're currently having about the situation you're going through, and look at the big picture. And solutions to the fucking problem will reveal themselves to you. Like I said, I'm going through a pretty fucking rough situation myself right now. I am making it through it. If you've listened to the past episodes titled The Situation, you'll have a rough idea of what I'm dealing with, what I'm going through, and I have basically three issues in one situation, and I'm looking at that way because each issue is technically intertwined, so I'm viewing it as, you know, one major, one situation, just three separate issues comprising of that situation. Um, I'm doing what I gotta do to get through it. I have a friend who's, you know, more or less been there for me, supporting me, you know, through it, helping me, you know, fucking more or less stay strong. You know, when I, when I start fucking getting, you know, over anxious, 
stress levels start getting fucking too high. Um, I start fucking falling into a depressive state. He'll talk to me. He'll, he'll help calm me down. Get me back on track. And that's what you fucking gotta need. need. You need to focus on the solution. If you've got somebody in your life that's there for you, no matter what, you know, the good and the bad, let, let them be there for you. Let, let them fucking guide them, talk to you. Let them help you, help you out through the situation. If you can't visibly see a solution to the problem yourself, maybe, you know, that somebody in your life will see a, a solution. Um, or if you do see a solution, but you don't know how you're gonna be able to fucking pull it off, you know, maybe somebody in your life that's, you know, generally there for you, no matter what, will be able to support you along the way to reach that fucking solution. And just before, you know, I go on, or anybody gets the wrong idea, I'm not talking fucking goddamn financial or strictly financial, because I understand there's that a lot of situations, money does come into play. A lot of situations, money would fix almost overnight, depending on, you know, how much is involved and what the situation exactly is. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just, you know, having somebody to talk to, somebody to fucking got and bounce ideas off of, somebody to fucking vent to and relieve some of your fucking damn stress. Because if you keep things bottled up inside, it, it, it's, it gets dangerous. You're going to be more prone to more frequent fucking panic attacks. Your anxiety is going to fucking go through the fucking goddamn roof. Your stress level is just, is just going to keep on fucking climbing. And in the process, your chances of having a best case scenario outcome on that situation is going to grow slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. You don't want that. You don't want a worst case scenario to any situation you're dealing with in life. No matter fucking how small or how big the situation is, a worst case scenario is never, you know, a good scenario to deal with. You want the best possible case scenario outcome, regardless what the situation is. So no matter how big of a situation or how serious the situation appears at face value, you have to keep yourself calm. You got somebody in your life that you can fucking talk to, that you can, you know, vent to, Get rid of, you know, lower your fucking stress levels a little bit. And, and, and bounce ideas off of. Do it. Utilize those people in your life. That's what they're fucking there for. If somebody's trying to fucking be there for you and, and, and support you, let them. Don't fucking think you have to fucking go about, you know, situation, different situations in your life alone. No matter how big it is, no matter how embarrassing the situation is, or how the situation ended up happening is, don't ever fucking feel like you have to do it alone or attempt to do it alone when you have people in your life that are fucking trying to be there for you and trying to fucking support you. I can say from experience, going through different situations by myself versus going through situations allowing those close to me that were trying to be there for me by letting them be there for me and letting them you know, bounce ideas back and forth with, with me and, and give me, you know, in, insight, you know, as the outsider looking in. You're going to get through the situation a lot fucking goddamn faster when you have that support system helping you out. I don't, I don't really care. What the situation is, or how serious the situation is, how bleak it looks to you, you do have the strength to get through it. And you more than likely do have at least one person in your life that's willing to be your support system to help you fucking get through it. Even if, like me, you suffer with BPD or another similar severe mental health issue, Believe it or not, you do have somebody in your life that understands you and is willing to support you if you fucking let them. Even if you don't fucking believe it. They are there. In my case, it's my best fucking friend. He's been there for me, you know, 
probably more than, than any of my friends in my whole life have, have ever been. Um, he's at, he even would go he would even go as far as you know telling me things about me about how I'm trying to handle shit that I didn't even want to hear and would would upset me. But I thank him for it because, quite frankly, you know, if I'm doing something that in the long run is going to make my situation worse or um, get my situation to a point that's going to make it even harder to rectify, to get out of, I want to know that, that you know, I'm heading in that direction so I can get back on track and make sure, you know, I get through what I'm, what I'm dealing with as quickly as possible and have the best possible case scenario as the outcome. But see, that's what her fucking real friend, or someone, someone that's actually truly there for you, truly fucking cares for you, truly supports you, is going to do. They're going to tell you shit that nobody else is going to fucking tell you. Regardless how it fucking makes you feel. Because they don't give a shit about, you know, making you fucking goddamn feel upset if what they have to say is only going to better you in the long run. If you got people that are only going to fucking tell you shit you want to hear because they don't want to upset you, they don't want to piss you off, they, they, or they don't want to fucking goddamn worry about, you know, harming your, your fucking friendship, they're not a fucking friend. A real friend, or a real, you know, close, any regardless of what the relationship status is, whether it's a friend, family, whatever, if they're really there for you, they're gonna fucking tell you whatever the ha- whatever the fuck they have to, regardless how it fucking gotta makes you feel. Because their goal is to help make you a better person. Their goal is to help you get through whatever it is you're fucking dealing with, with the and ha- with the best possible fucking outcome of that fucking situation. They're not gonna fucking sit idly by and watch you fucking ma- make your life worse than it has to be. And yeah, at that times. These things are said. You will be upset initially fucking hearing it. But after the fact, if you think about what they said and, and, you know, take into consideration that they're the outsider looking in. They're, they're watching what you're doing, how you're handling your situation. So, so they're potentially seeing things that you yourself dealing with the situation aren't able to see. You take that into consideration while you think about what they fucking said to you, you might realize that, that they were right. They weren't necessarily trying to anger you or upset you. They were, they were simply fucking looking out for your best interest. And they're trying to fucking help you get through whatever it is you're dealing with. The best possible fucking outcome. They're trying to help you become a better person, a better version of yourself. They're not trying to intentionally hurt you or intentionally fucking upset you. They're saying what they got to say to make you realize different things and try to save you from, you know, making shit worse for yourself. So, from somebody who's had one hell of a life, been through some serious shit. One story of which I already spoken about on this on this podcast. Um, other stories I'll get to you know in future episodes. And the more the more stories I, I talk about, you'll see just how fucked up my life has been, and how much fucking shit that I've made it through. You know, and and why people in my family have told me that I'm a survivor. And I always get through what life throws at me, and I'll get through this situation too. Um, from somebody who's literally been through fucking hell and back several times throughout my life, I'm telling you, whatever the fuck it is you're dealing with, no matter how bleak of a situation it is, keep yourself as calm as you possibly can. Allow your support system to be there for you and support you. Take a step back and look at the, the, the whole picture. Don't focus on just what the problem itself is. Look at the whole picture. Allow the solution or the, the, the different number of solutions all make themselves all reveal themselves to you and start working on the solution. Focus on the solution, not the problem, not, not the fucking situation itself. 
but the solution to the situation. And start working towards that. And you will be amazed at just how fucking strong you actually are. And what kind of fucking situations in life you actually can get through if you allow yourself to fucking get through it. There's way too many people that, you know, focus on just the, the situation stuff. How bad it is, how bleak it is. And they, they end up making life worse for themselves. Even if the situation does ha- have a semi-good outcome. Overall, their life, you know, goes to shit. Because they're focusing too much on the situation itself. The outcome that they got, even if it was a uh, semi-good outcome, it wasn't the best outcome it could have been. Had they stepped back, kept themselves calm, and just focused on the solution. And if you do suffer with mental health issues, like I do, particularly if you suffer with BPD, yeah, sometimes it can be extremely difficult to keep yourself calm. But if you can, if you, if you're listening to me right now, you can hear that my voice isn't trembling. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a relatively calm state of mind, despite how serious of a fucking situation that I'm going through, I'm dealing with right now. Which is pretty fucking serious. But I'm getting through it. And I'm able to, to remain this calm while I'm dealing with it because I do have the support system that I'm allowing to be there for me and support me. I do have a plan. Uh, I do have a, a solution for the best case scenario, for, uh, for uh, you know, best case outcome for the situation. And that's what I'm focusing on. And I've also spent years following my diagnosis working on myself, working on, you know, coping, different coping skills. So I'm actually a lot calmer now dealing with this than I would have been, um, pre-diagnosis or even, you know, within the first couple of years of my diagnosis. Because, you know, I didn't have the coping skills that I have now to deal with this. So if this situation that I'm dealing with now happened to me back then, I'd probably be a stressed out, panicked mess, like a, an almost non-stop panic attack. Which, I can tell you from experience, from older, older problems I dealt with, would only make shit a lot worse, and would only bring on more problems I'd have to deal with immediately following the problem I was going through, upon getting through that initial problem. So, you know, being... Having different coping skills and being able to keep yourself calm and allowing your support system to be there for you is key to getting through situations and allowing the best possible outcome to happen at the end of the fucking situation. And depending on the situation, no, it's not going to happen overnight. It, it, it could be a long while. I mean, This situation I'm dealing with now has been going on for quite a bit. It is stabilizing. It is getting better. But despite the fact that it's stabilizing and and I'm getting it under control, it's going to be a few more months. It's going to be a few more months before I'm completely out of it. Um, And there are other, you know, more minor issues I got to deal with along the way. But... I'm getting through it. It's stabilized. Stabilizing. So bottom line is, regardless of the issue, yes, it could take, you know, a year, two years, maybe maybe longer, depending on what the issue is. But if you're focused on the solution, not the issue itself, and you have the coping skills and the ability to keep yourself as calm as possible, even if you have just one person in your corner, to convent to and you know to really use as a support system even if it's just one person that that that, that's really all you fucking need i don't want to hear that you can't get through it that the situation is going to destroy your life no it's not you're going to get through it calm yourself down take a deep breath count to 10 exhale slowly do that you know about three four times Calm yourself down. If you have somebody in your life 
come back there for you, vent to them, let them know what's going on, you know, bounce possible solutions back and forth with them, you know, and remember that, that, that they're the outsider looking in. They might be able to see things with that situation, that, that problem, that you don't. They might have a solution to that problem that they can help you achieve that you can't see because you're, you know, directly affected, whereas they're indirectly affected, you know? Um, so they might be able to see things that you can't. And use that person and use your coping skills to, you know, keep yourself as calm as possible and focus on the solution, not the problem. And I can guarantee you that as long as it takes to get through, depending on what the situation is, like I said, depending on what it is, will determine, you know, how much time passes before you're finally through it. I understand that. But focusing on the solution, not the problem, keeping yourself calm, utilizing your support system, I can fucking guarantee you will come out on the other end of that of that problem with the best possible case scenario as the outcome. So just just keep your head up, focus on the solution, allow your support system to be there for you, and cut out any fucking negativity you have in your life, whether it's the area you live in, whether it's, you know, people in your life, um, whether it be bad habits, any combination thereof, anything that is fucking creating negativity in your life, get out of your life, because you can't have any additional negativity or any additional shit that's going to fucking pull you down in addition to the situation you're trying to deal with. You need to focus on that, that, the solution to that situation and nothing else. Anything that's causing negativity in your life, get rid of it. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe for subscriber only content. You can find links to subscribe at show.redconrad.com. Subscriptions are available directly through Spotify, as well as through your, a memberful account, where you, you can access subscriber-only content on any podcast listening platform. Whatever platform you prefer to listen to podcasts on, you will be able to listen to my subscriber-only content on that platform via a, a feed specifically for you through your memberful account. Again, the links to subscriptions can be found at show.redconrad.com. Hi, everyone. This is JJ, the co-founder of Good Pods. If you haven't heard of it yet, Good Pods is like Goodreads or Instagram, but for podcasts. It's new, it's social, it's different, and it's growing really fast. There are more than 2 million podcasts, and we know that it is impossible to figure out what to listen to. On Good Pods, you follow your friends and podcasters to see what they like. That is the number one way to discover new shows and episodes. You can find Good Pods on the web or download the app. Happy listening. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Red Conrad Show. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, if you're not listening on Spotify, Spotify is the home of my subscription-only content. Any stories you want to hear that have part one or you know, they're missing pieces on the, on the free side, you got to hop over to Spotify and subscribe to the, subscri- to the subscription content to get the uh, missing pieces of those particular stories. I will see you in the next episode.